When I'm doing historical videos, there are times where I'll go through and I'll, I'll say, you know what, I'm really interested in the career of, you know, and it's players that I've I've watched and and players that I respected. And and I, I say that in an odd way because I, I really did respect Mike Vernon. I thought he was a great goaltender. But, boy, did this uh, did, did this career go in odd directions. So, in, in putting this video together, yeah, there's some odd things that happen here. So, a guy who never won a Vesna, you can argue, has some, some Hall of Fame level qualities. But, if you're a Flames fan from back then, you may very well make an argument against him being in the Hall. So, here we go. Now, he was Calgary-born. And of his brothers, it was said that he was the one that would always end up playing net. So anytime you needed somebody to play net, you'd ask Mike. He'd get net. He'd get net. He's only five foot nine, which is short. And by today's standards, there's no way he gets drafted. If he came up now, he doesn't get drafted. He doesn't even get a sniff of the NHL. Doesn't get anywhere near it. Five foot nine. No, They're, they don't even look at goaltenders that are even an even six foot. I was reading an article a couple days ago, and how Dustin Wolf, who's six feet tall, was just signed by the. The, uh, the the flames he is he is trying to prove that six feet tall you can still be a goaltender in the NHL so when you watch games from the 80s and it looks like the goaltenders are a lot smaller they are uh, it's not just the equipment they're they're physically smaller and Vernon was small even by standards back then so he makes his debut two games in 82 83 761 safe percentage for him then two losses uh, makes one appearance in 83 84 333 safe percentage in that so just cups of coffee there. Spends a whole 84-85 season in the minors, 85-86. He gets called up 18 games, 9-3-3 and record with an 875 save percentage. So the overall numbers are good because in the playoffs, he wins 12 games. 12-9 uh, and nine with an 897 save percentage. So he comes in as a rookie, goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals where he meets a rookie, Patrick Waugh. So it's Raw versus Vernon, two young guys. And Glenn Hall would say that that he felt Mike Vernon was one of the best goalies of this this decade, of this era that was going on, that Vernon was just overshadowed by guys like Fuhrer and Raw. So, 86-87 rolls around. He's the starter. Coming out of that run to the Stanley Cup Finals, he's the starter. Uh, 54 games, 30 wins, 21 losses, and a tie. 8.83 save percentage. In the playoffs, they lose in the first round. He goes 2-3 and three with an 8.82 save percentage. All right, 87-88, 64 games played, 39 wins, which would be a career high, 16 losses and 7 ties, 877 save percentage. People will look at that save percentage and say, well, that's really low, which it is, but again, by today's standards, right? It was number four in Vesna voting that year. He was number four overall in Vesna voting that year. So, yeah, the, the save percentage, not great, but he had a lot of wins in there. He was a very good goaltender. In the playoffs, 4-4 four and four with an 838 save percentage. And, of course, the Oilers won the Cup that year. So, 88-89 rolls around, and this, for me, is his best year, at least as a flame. Uh, they win the Stanley Cup, 52 games played, 37-6-5 and five record. He led the NHL in, in wins with 37. The 897 save percentage was fourth overall in the NHL. He's number two in Vesna voting. He was also a number two All-Star that year. And he goes 16 and 5 in the playoffs with a 905 save percentage. And his saves were highlight reel. Like you're talking like the Sveshnikov of goalies at that point. Almost every save was highlight reel. His glove hand was absolutely fantastic. That's what I remember was just his catching ability being amazing and how he robbed the, the Canucks in the first round and then cruised from there. 16 and 5. Three of those five losses were against Vancouver. So Vancouver gave them a push in that first round and then they cruised after that. 89-90, the, the honeymoon phase with him in Calgary would not last. Uh, 47 games, 23-14-9 record, 870 save percentage in the playoffs, 2-3 and three record with an 872 save percentage. And the Boo Birds come out in Calgary. And it, it reveals how, it feels like in Canadian markets when you're a goaltender, you're as good as your last game is truer than it is anywhere else. Uh, 90 91, 54 games, 31 19 and 3 record, 878 save percentage in the playoffs, 3 and 4 with an 897 save percentage. So, again, they're out in the first round, and Mike Vernon starts taking some flack for that. To the point where his parents, everybody knows who his parents are, they're in the crowd and they get hassled. They get hassled by fans. 
To the point where Mike Vernon's telling him to leave his parents alone. You have a problem with me, talk to me, leave my parents out of it. His parents cancel their season tickets. They stop going to Flames games. Remember, this is a family from Calgary. It's not a good look. Uh, 92, 93, I know, Calgary, Vancouver sets the, sets the city on fire, I know, glass, glass houses and all that. 91, 92, 63 games, 24, 30, and 9 record, 883 save percentage, they don't make the playoffs. 92, 93, 64 games played, 29, 26, and 9 record, 887 save percentage in the playoffs, he goes 1-1 one and one with an 815 save percentage. And Trevor Kidd's knocking on the door, Trevor Kidd's the future, this is going to be the guy... This is going to turn stuff around in Calgary. And definitely, again, the Boo Birds in Calgary are out. And his relationship with the fans, acrimonious. The last year he plays in Calgary, 48 games, 26, 17, and 5 record, 892 save percentage, 3 and 4 record in the playoffs, 895 save percentage. So again, they're out in the first round. And now it's got to be Vernon's fault, right? We're going to go to this Trevor Kidd guy. Can't fail with Trevor Kidd. So he's traded June 29th, 1994 for Steve Chase on. That's it. Just Steve Chase on gets you Mike Vernon. And he wasn't really happy about it. Just Vernon wasn't a happy guy at this stage in his career. So he goes to Detroit, where, of course, the storyline of Detroit is no cup since 1955. 94-95 plays 30 games. 19-6-4 record with an 893 save percentage. 12 and 6 in the playoffs. So in the playoffs, he takes over. 889 save percentage in the playoffs. They go all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals with Vernon in net. 95 96, he plays 32 games for the Wings. 21 7 and 2 record. 903 save percentage. He shares the Jennings Award, which is, of course, lowest goals against average in the NHL. In the playoffs, he's 2 and 2 with an 864 save percentage. 96 97, Scotty Bowman shows why he's one of the greatest coaches in the game. So 96 97. Osgood's the starter. Osgood is shaky towards the end of the year, and Scotty Bowman says, I'm going with Mike Vernon in the playoffs. I'm going with the veteran. I'm going with the guy that I believe in. So Vernon's regular season numbers are pedestrian. 33 games, 13, 11, and 8 with an 899 save percentage. But he'd win a Conn Smythe trophy. He goes 16 and 4 in the playoffs, 927 save percentage. So Scotty Bowman. Plays it right. And this is one of the reasons why when people talk about Scotty Bowman and they say, well, yeah, he got all those cup rings, but look at the teams he coached. The decision to go with Mike Vernon, a guy who hadn't won since 95, 95, 96, it didn't work out. A guy who had only won that that year was the only year he'd got out of the first round since 89. There's risk in that. There's risk in, in going with Mike Vernon. And it pays off because Scotty Bowman's brilliant. Now, there's a problem in Detroit after the 97 Cup win. They got three goalies, and waivers means somebody's going to have to go. So they decide to go with Osgood and Kevin Hodson as the backup. They decide it's in their best interest to trade Mike Vernon and go with Osgood and Hodson as the, the tandem for 97-98. August 18th of 1997, traded with a fifth-round pick in 1999 to San Jose. Uh, Mike Vernon goes in return for a second-round pick in 1998 and a second-round pick in 1999, which became Sheldon Keefe. So the other names aren't noteworthy, and Sheldon Keefe. So San Jose wins this trade going away. He goes to San Jose, and immediately there's there's respectability in, in San Jose's game, and they go to the playoffs. 62 games played, 30-22-8 record, 896 save percentage. He was 8th in Vezina voting that year. So good season for him in the playoffs, 2-4 and four record with an 899 save percentage. 98-99, 49 games played, 16-22-10 record, 911 save percentage. 2-3 and three record in the playoffs, 924 save percentage. Now, Mike Vernon wasn't happy to get traded again. 99-2000, uh, he, he ends up getting traded. He's 15 games into his season, 6-5-1 and one record, 9-11 save percentage. He'd been hurt. He felt like, all right, I'm going to come back. I'm going to have a big second half. Uh, meanwhile, Trevor Kidd's in Florida, and he's getting hurt. So uh, Mike Vernon is approached with, you've been traded to Florida. And he's like, but... Why? Well, the reality is there's this kid coming up in San Jose named Nabokov, and San Jose wants to give him a shot at getting some net. And, of course, San Jose has a lot of prospects coming up for, for the goaltending position. Steve Shields had made Mike Vernon somewhat expendable as well. So Vernon doesn't pout about it. He uh, gets 34 games in as a Florida Panther, 18-13-2 record, 9-19 save percentage, 9-17 overall for the season, which is fifth in the NHL. And in the playoffs, he goes 0-4 with a 9-12 save percentage. 
So Florida does what they do. They lose in the first round of the playoffs. And and then we're we're up to the expansion draft. So in the expansion draft, he's drafted by Doug Risebrow's um Philadelphia or Minnesota Wild. So Doug Risebrow's the guy who traded him to Detroit. Doug Risebrow decides I'm I'm looking at a lot of goalies here. Mike Vernon is in his late thirties. I, I don't know that he's a guy I'm going to look at towards the future, so I'm going to go with these these other younger goalies. I'm going to f- swap Vernon. Where does he send Vernon? Back to Calgary. So he's he's claimed by the Wild, and he's traded to Calgary for a 2001 eighth-round pick and the rights to Dan Kavanaugh. So the press tells Mike Vernon, hey, you're going back to Calgary, and he says, Oh my God, I'm going where? You have got to be kidding me. And then he went golfing. Didn't talk to Craig Button for a while. Craig Button, GM of the the Flames at the time, really wanted to get him into the fold and and felt he could help mentor the, the younger Flames and felt that Vernon was a changed man in the time since he'd left Calgary. And yeah, Vernon's reaction of, are you serious? Is similar to if, for instance... Uh, Luongo had been traded back to Vancouver by Florida at some point. I think you would have seen a similar reaction from him. Not necessarily as outwardly. It feels like Vernon kind of wore his heart on his sleeve, which is a great thing when you're winning. But when you're not winning, it means makes you a target for probably fans and media alike. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, Trevor Kidd takes over as starter for Calgary. At least that was the plan when he leaves. And when he leaves Florida, in part it's because Kidd's still the starter there. So Kidd's going to be the starter. Uh, so Trevor Kidd crosses paths with him a couple of times. So he goes back to Calgary. And in his in his defense, uh, plays 41 games that first year back. 12-23-5 record. 8-83 save percentages. Dark time for Calgary. Things haven't got a whole lot better in Calgary since he left. Uh, his last year in the NHL is 0 one 2 uh, 18 games, 2-9 and 1 record with an 899 save percentage. So his overall record, 385 wins, 274 losses, 92 ties, 890 career save percentage. In the playoffs, 77 wins, 56 losses, 896 save percentage. I can't in good in good faith tell you. I can't honestly look at you right now and say, "Hey, Vernon needs to be a Hall of Famer." But it's a fascinating tale. It's a fascinating tale that he he gets uh, booed out of the arena a lot and his parents are hassled, and then he ends up going back. And I'm sure his reaction, I'm sure that golf game was something. I am sure that anybody that was golfing with him that day probably got quite the tails. And uh, he was he was a good goaltender. It, it's an interesting career because he was a very good goaltender. I liked Vernon, and I liked Vernon as a Canucks fan. So as a Canucks fan, I'm not supposed, I'm supposed I should be laughing at all this. Um, and it, it was it was just crazy to see how things went in in Calgary when things started to go downhill with Vernon. Uh, for a comparable, Kirk McLean had his struggles after the Canucks went to the finals in '94. I don't remember seeing any kind of acrimonious relationship between McLean and fans or even media locally. Because even though his game did fall off, we still revered and still revere Kirk McLean to this day. So, uh, Mike Vernon. 781 games played. Nice long career for him. And uh, he won a con Smythe after being a backup for the whole season. So that was that was a surprise. And then him being traded to San Jose was as well. Although Detroit really didn't feel like at the time they had a choice. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. It's a fascinating career. So even if the, the numbers on this don't do very well. Uh, Mike Vernon is a really fascinating career to look at. But let me know your thoughts, and uh, I will talk to you again soon.